One area I feel like engines really struggle with is evaluating material imbalances. For example, what if one side just up a pawn? Is that plus one? Is it more? Is it less? And I feel like an engine like Stockfish often likes the material much more than it should. Also, control of squares. When you see an opening like the King's Indian defense, it tends to really like white's position because white has a stronger center and I think underestimates black's counterplay in the line such as that. Well, let's look at this game where it was a Leningrad Dutch, an opening that I really don't like, and so d4, f5. And, well, maybe I should start liking it because alpha zero plays it and wins with it. So what do I know about chess? Knight f3, knight f6, and okay, this follows a very natural plan of action. Both sides developing, castling, and white has the better control of the center because of these nice pawns on c4 and d4, right? Those are controlling the central squares, you know, d5, c5, e5, th these kind of squares are all under control. Black, uh, to its credit, has control over the e4 square and can play h6, g5, queen e8, queen h5, right? By having the pawn on f5 rather than f7, it opens up that diagonal for the queen to jump over to the king's side and launch an attack. That will come in handy in this game. So d6, okay, all these moves are pretty normal. Queen b3, keeping the bishop honest on the c8 square to cover b7. Also threatening at some point c5 check to open up a discover in the king. So all these moves make perfect sense. h6, and look at the evaluation bar. It's jumped out to plus 1.32. Now it goes back down to plus 0.83, and that's because uh, it's looking at more ply, it's trying to see the position more deeply, and this is the chess.com server engine, which is Stockfish. When Stockfish is playing with the white pieces, Alpha Zero does not look at chess the same way. It's not looking at, oh, am I you know, five tenths of a pawn better, am I five tenths of a pawn worse? So I think that actually proves to be a huge advantage when playing the traditional engine. So. White does everything normally to gain space. C5 with check. Do not play this move pawn to D5 because if you play this move D6 to D5, you have huge trouble after bishop to F4. Your rook's under attack. If your rook moves, you lose the B7 pawn. Um, this knight has the E5 square to use as well. So everything is sort of favoring white in a position like this. You definitely do not want to play D5. So the king runs away, knight A4. And what did I say about squares, right? Currently, this b6 square looks weak. Uh, it would become an outpost for the white knight. No black pawn can kick it out. Whereas because um, white's setup is as such, there are no outposts for black's pieces. So rook a, I love this move, rook a. Defending this pawn a5 so that the queen can go on its kingside journey. Really good move. So all this stuff is um, following the plans, the themes that I discussed before. Clearly black trying to get that queen over there to the king side. White, on the other hand, would love to team up on this pawn on a5, which is why knight d2, queen h5, and bishop f3 would play. So bishop on f3, it attacks the queen. It makes knight g4 a little bit harder to play because then just knight back to f1. The knight's pinned to the queen. Uh, not exactly the most comfortable situation for black. But playing g4 is also, in a way, a concession. Because by playing this move g4, it means I'm not going to get f4 in. Of course, I need to move my king off the h7 square before playing f4. But that's one of the main ideas, is breaking open the king's side. And g4 looks like it closes the king's side. But after bishop e2, king h8, a very good move. Getting the king off that diagonal where the queen is sort of lurking. And knight c4. So look at the evaluation bar. Plus 0.91 at the moment. And that's now jumped over plus one. And the point is that this pawn on a5 is going to fall. Right? It's just going to be lost. White is threatening the d6 pawn and the a5 pawn at the same time. And so the engine, this being stoppage, loves this position. But not so fast. Because knight e4 makes perfect sense. Threatening to come to g5. And then once it gets to g5, it can go to h3 or to f3. Um, it's very dangerous. So h4 just stops the knight from coming to g5, right? Because if you go to g5, it'll just take you. You can't take my pawn en passant because you lose your queen on h5. So this looks like a very good move for white. But this is why I'm pausing, because it's just so nice. Knight g5 anyway. 
Alphazir must have recognized a while back that this sacrifice would give it the upper hand. Yes, you're giving up a knight for one pawn, and it says at the current moment plus 1.16 in white's favor, but that's misleading because after pawn takes g5, pawn takes g5, and that evaluation is sneaking up to almost three and it's coming back down quickly to 1.28, and look at that, it's shrinking, it's shrinking, and all of a sudden you see that black is the one who is actually picking up steam here and has an advantageous position because black's plan is simple. Rook to f6, rook to h6, queen in for checkmate. If that one doesn't work, maybe I can go f4 and just break open the f file. So white tries to play f3, saying that I've now opened up the second rank for some defense. I can even put my rook on d2 and swing it to the h file. And after gf3, bishop f1, f4, it's exactly what Stockfish did. He played rook to d2. Threatening rook h2, winning that queen, right? The queen will be pinned. But the tactics concretely favor black here. Alpha zero just has a perfect position because after pawn takes e3, if you play rook h2, now f2 check comes. Your king has to go over, I mean, it doesn't matter where you go. I'm sacking my queen. And it looks like all is well, but then rook f6 comes into play and rook h6 check is just leading to a mate because your king only has one square and uh, g2. My bishop will always be able to go to the h3 square with check. I might as well just put my rook to f8 first. And black's king is just getting swarmed, right? All of, excuse me, white's king is getting swarmed. Black's pieces are all there threatening to checkmate it. And not to mention that there is this bishop hanging at the moment's notice to take on e1. So instead, after pawn takes e3, knight takes e3 was played. Going for the same exact idea, right? Rook h2 is still a deadly pin, winning the queen on h5. But after knight e3, rook h2, you don't want to take this queen on c2. Because if you do that, rook h5 comes to check, the king has to move to g8, and then you lose your knight on uh, c2. And black still has compensation, but white is doing well in a position like this. So don't be fooled. And this move, bishop h3, another wonderful shot. And look at the evaluation up to almost 0.9 for black. Okay, it just came back down a little bit, but stockfish not certain of itself here. And why bishop h3 is so nice is after rook h3, you sack this queen on the h3 square. You've got a rook for the bishop that you gave. And let's do a material count when we get to the end of this here. We see that black has two rooks and seven pawns. White has a rook, two minor pieces, and four. So three pawns and a rook for two minor pieces. That is more than enough for the black side here. So alpha zero has achieved a uh, much better position, but converting it to win may not be so easy. And let's see how this happens. Black playing normally. Okay, attacking the bishop. The rook comes to the fence, and now rook to f8. So you can't take on f3 because if you take on f3 with the rook, you lose your bishop on e6. And now alpha zero initiates a very forcing sequence. Knight d7, attacking the rook on f8, trying to kick it off the f file, so you can take the pawn on f3. But look at this, rook h2 check, king f1, and rook e2. Offering the exchange of rooks, even at the cost of a pawn, is great for black, because you still have two pawns, a rook and two pawns for the two minor pieces, and now white cannot protect the remaining pawns. You needed that rook on the second rank defending the a2 pawn. Now this rook is coming down very quickly and well, there's just no defense for that side of the board. So rook h6, rook d5, and that's good because now black has a clear two on none majority in the center. And what alpha zero ends up doing is forcing stockfish backward to bishop d1. Okay, you could take this pawn on a2, but instead king e7 attacking the knight on d7 and now king f6 so the king is just coming into the action and that's what you need you need some backup you can't just play with a, ro a roving rook you need the king to come in to help the pawns advance and so what alpha zero does is give up both the b pawn and the g pawn here so b7 hangs with check but okay king to b6 and now feel free to take this g pawn because once you take g4 which you should because my pawn is also just about to push to g3. You take it, but now b3 falls and black's pawns are unopposed. The c pawn and d pawn with the help of the king and the support of the rook are just pushing through. So in fact, the resignation occurred right here. 
because it's just completely losing. If you go knight f4, yeah, you're keeping your knight on the board, but after king to c5, this king comes to b4, and both of these pawns will start marching towards promotion. So a phenomenal showing by alpha zero, understanding that, well, you don't think in center pawns with the deep mind creation, instead you think uh, in ideas and very concretely, and I think that Stockfish really didn't appreciate just how beautiful this option was because it looked like, and just to show that position again here, that it looked like white was stopping black's idea with knight to g5, right? h4 is played expressly to stop it, right? That is why h4 happened, but still knight g5 occurred, and once the h file was open, white has to do something to avoid getting mated, and of course black was able to uh, take full advantage. So again, the engine still shows that Stockfish is better, we proved that's not the case. So a great performance by AlphaZero and a very deserved victory in this match.